Hello, everyone. I'm George Pong from Mylin Tech, and I'm happy to be here at GTC Spring 2023 to share a little bit about how to train and deploy AI models on servers and edge devices, and how to protect your AI models from unintended copies. My colleague Brad Huang is also happy to be here to answer the questions in the chat room. Mylin Tech was established in 2020, spun off from the Industrial Technology Research Institute, Taiwan. Our mission is to provide an ML ops platform for the AI ecosystem, saving time and resources to help the AI development teams focus on their domain knowledge. This talk will cover four parts. It starts with a brief introduction about why we need to retrain and protect our models. Next, we talk about how to retrain a model and manage model versions effectively, followed by some practical considerations on model protection and how to implement it. Last, we will put them all together with an automated pipeline and demonstrate our sample application. Imagine you install a music app on your smartphone. You could interact with the app just like chatting with a real person. And you enjoy listening to the hit songs it plays for you. Sounds good, doesn't it? But what if this app never renews its music recommendation model for months or even years? You might feel bored because it does not learn new songs. And I believe this app will not live any time longer on your cell phone. Another example where we should also renew and customize the models is checking systems by faces that are useful in companies, conferences, and many other scenarios. Different companies have different employees and we want to retrain and to deploy the face recognition models separately. What's more, since it involves sensitive personal data, we should also protect the data and models carefully to avoid leakage. During this talk, we will go through a face recognition example. This virtual example is only for demonstration. We do not publish or sell any face recognition data set, models, or services. Our face recognition technology is enhanced from FaceNet. It starts by detecting faces in a video frame, extracting the face regions, and computing the features called face embeddings with an inception ResNet model and we finally train a support vector machine model for classification that separates the face embeddings belonging to different persons. Here are some things to consider. How to customize our models for different users. How to protect the models to prevent sensitive data leakage. And how to efficiently manage and to deploy new model versions. AI models' functionality and behavior depend on the model design, training data, and training process. After new data are available, we retrain the model to update its functionality. It is then deployed online to serve new requests once the model is ready for production. By keeping monitoring the service, we know when the model's performance degrades and may start another retraining iteration at early stage to control the service quality. Therefore, to keep a production AI system in good condition, ML Ops, machine learning operations, is here to automate such a process, making AI system upgrades manageable and repeatable. In practice, it is more complicated than we might think in the beginning, which includes source and data management, 
development environment, and many other tasks. Thanks to contributors from all around the world, we have a bunch of useful tools to do ML ops today. The remaining efforts are to choose the best suitable tools and put them to smoothly work together. Mindintex ML Thin provides a straightforward integrated ML ops platform that supports most of the common tasks, so that people could focus on the core development work. Data management, notebook environment, experiment tracking, AI model management, model pipelining, model serving, and application serving are all available at hand in ML Thin. ML Thin helps operators manage multiple compute nodes in a unified platform, among which it could run on gigabyte server product line ranging from supercomputing to edge computing, which has NVIDIA GPU technologies built in. Users could find the best suitable server model and enterprise support depending on their application, computing requirements, and budgets. Gigabyte enterprise servers are equipped with NVIDIA H100 GPUs, which support the NVLink and the GPU Direct technologies, enabling GPUs to communicate with GPUs, CPUs, and storage through faster channels and shortening the latency in AI training and applications within or across the compute nodes. In addition, H100 supports the second generation multi instance GPU feature which allows GPUs to be securely partitioned into up to seven GPU instances where multiple users could run their AI workloads separately. MLSTIN supports hardware resource management and a multi-instance GPU configuration to fully utilize and monitor GPUs and other server resources. Here, we will demonstrate how to do a model retraining iteration on ML Thin by adding new data, retraining the model, and registering the new model. A referential project layout proposed by data scientists include directories for saving data, trained models, analysis reports, as well as a source code for preparing data, models, and visualization. Data are typically not version controlled in the same way as source code does, and it is best practice to keep exactly one copy of raw data which are immutable. And the process data are kept in separate directories. This way, we reduce the data storage size while keep the data generation for each iteration repeatable. Of course, you may rename the directories or modify the layout for the actual project needs as long as it is logical for the developers. On ML Thin, we keep the original raw data in dataset, which is mountable in notebooks and the various execution environments under the slash MLSTIN slash data folder. For this face recognition dataset, Files are grouped by individual persons within different collections. To add a new collection for model training, first, we enter the dataset folder and upload the images for new persons to recognize. The uploaded images could be viewed in the file browser. Then, we enter the notebook environment put the images into the training folder, and run the training script. The training script scans through all images and drops unusable ones. It creates embeddings for all included images and then rebuilds SVN models for classification. For simplicity, we assume the trained models are good enough for use. In practice, however, we need to track the model retraining process 
and the evaluation results to measure the quality of models. ML's Thin Client is an experiment tracking library available via pip install. With ML's Thin Client, we could get the hyperparameter values and could track the model retraining process by recording a single numeric value or a time series for visualization. We could view the live results of the recording metrics at the tracks page. After the new models have been created, we go to the model registry page. A new model is registered by selecting its packaging type. Here, we want to encrypt the models. The model files, hook files, manifest, and the encryption key type. We will mention more about model encryption in the next part. Here, we talk about protecting the models registered on server and deployed on edge nodes. Practical considerations include how to protect models stored at server, how to protect models during transmission from server to client. For example, malicious people may attempt to steal the models by intercepting the network communication. How to protect models stored at client how to avoid models being copied between clients, for example, making unauthorized copies into other devices. And last, how to make model protection boring for the developers. That is, how could we help developers build up a workable and strong cryptography without having them deal with the underlying complexities? To address these considerations, we implement a model protection scheme that covers model delivery from developer to client based upon security expert advice. When a developer registers an originally plain test trained model, the server keeps an encrypted copy of it with a strong storage key to minimize the risk of a model leakage in case that the disk is stolen. When a client is authenticated and requests the model, in addition to network encryption, the model itself is also encrypted individually for the client with a shared key derived from a server's temporary key and the client's temporary key. The key exchange is made in a time-dependent manner against replay attacks. When a client receives and saves the model, the model is encrypted again with a strong device-dependent key to prevent leakage or abuse by copying it to other device. Finally, the model is only temporarily recovered in a buffer controlled by the SDK when the application gets running. This way, we minimize the lifetime of a model when it is in plain text form. Next, we talk about how a model is packaged. A model package consists of three parts. Firstly, models contain all the model or any sensitive data to protect. For example, a pickled scikit-learn object, a TensorFlow saved model, or a PyTorch state dict. Secondly, hooks should contain at least two Python scripts, load and predict, which are called indirectly by the SDK. You could also add other reference scripts filed here. Manifest defines the important attributes of the package, such as its name, version, framework, inputs, and outputs. After a model is packaged and registered on server, a client-side application could access the model as clean as calling the download model version, load model version, and the predict methods in SDK, as shown in the example here. Underlying things such as model encryption, transmission, storage, and the loading are all handled by SDK behind the scenes. The model SDK is available with pip install 
and more information and examples could be found on the website. Now, we use pipelining to make model rechaining iterations repeatable. One iteration in pipeline includes retraining models and registering the models, and there will be a web app on an edge node pulling the newly trained models on the device. We enter the pipeline and make it run. The pipeline contains four actions that will be executed one after another. It first defines common environment variables that will be referenced in other actions. Next, it imports training data from the dataset into a predetermined directory. Then, it starts a retraining process which builds new SVM models that separate phases belonging to different persons as what we did earlier. After the retraining completes, it registered the new model with SDK. The version name is derived from the current build time, so we could distinguish between the models built at different times. Now, let's look at our face recognition application. The Edge node is an NVIDIA Jetson TX2 box with a high-dimensional webcam attached. We go to the web app page and create a new app. Here, we select a flavor with a special tag that will place the web app on edge nodes and then select the model version created by pipeline. The web app starts. It initializes the SDK, downloads the model, and starts loading other modules such as a time series data store and a lightweight web server. The loading of a face recognition model is delayed until a face has been detected with a bounding box, and it takes a while before the service is fully operational. Finally, comparing the model results before and after retraining, it is found that the original model on the right-hand side makes misidentification, while the retrained model on the left side successfully identifies the person captured in camera. To end this talk, here are some takeaways. First, model needs constant retraining to keep updated and to serve different customers. Models should be protected to prevent leaking sensitive data or abusing intellectual property. Second, Model protection at least covers how it is encrypted, stored, and transmitted. A suitable SDK could ease the burden of developers in building up a reasonably strong cryptography. In addition, integrated MLOps development platform on top of a powerful GPU servers and edge devices increases resource utilization making AI model training, optimization, protection, and the deployment manageable and scalable. More information about the MLOps platform and GPU computing could be found here. Thank you to NVIDIA and the GTC community and the help from our partner Gigabyte Computing. Thanks for joining us in this session. 